Here I am for night number two. I uh, hunted here last night and uh, didn't see a hog all night long. I stayed all night long till nine o'clock this morning. Not one hog came in. And uh, this evening, I'm feeling really good about this evening. I've seen a lot of game moving. I think tonight's gonna be a good night. I'm after a particular hog that uh, I had two come in last weekend. I uh, got a video of the one I shot, a black hog, and a white one was with it. And I know it's still here, and so I'm trying to get that, uh, that white hog. Hopefully it'll show up tonight. Finally got to the top of this hill here and uh, get after this hunt. See if I can't uh, get that white hog that I'm after. Well, here I am at the top of the hill here and my hunting spot. I had to climb up a a little bit of a grade, but uh, finally made it up here and uh, ready to get after this hunt. And uh, see if we can get that white hog that I'm after. Here we are with my stand, and uh, you see it's a uh, elevated tree stand there. And uh, so let's uh, get settled in and uh, quieten down and uh, see if he shows up. See if we can uh, get lucky enough to get him tonight. And so uh, we'll see how it goes. It's about uh, 8.30. I didn't have to wait too late after dark. Uh, sitting here in my stand and uh, uh, playing with my phone and heard a bunch of racket and stuff down there where the my feed and my tubes are and and uh, put the monocular on there and looked and sure enough that white hog came in that I've been after and knocking those tubes around and uh, surprised me. So I had to get all ready and get my gun and and uh quietly get all set up and uh 
and uh, shoot and I got it and uh, so I gotta do the recovery now and I gotta get out of my stand and uh, get down there to my uh, a gun I've already lowered my gun down and it's get out of my ladder stand here AR-15 with my ATN night scope on it and supernova infrared flashlight and uh, There's my stand and I was sitting right up there all camouflaged in with cedar and uh, We're gonna go over here and take a look at this uh, Look at this hog here see what we got Not too far over here Right, kind of a whitish colored kind of a maybe kind of a light slight red that might be dirt or mud I'm not sure uh, uh, this is the hog that uh, last weekend I had two of them come in and with my crossbow and I got uh, said to myself the first one turns broadside I'm gonna get with the crossbow and uh, the black one turned broadside and uh, I wanted to actually shoot this one so I'm back uh, again. It's actually a boar, uh, a boar hog, and uh, so uh, got this one with the AR-15 this time. So got a lot of work. I got to get uh, get it butchered up, and uh, I'd like to show you what I do. I used to drag these things out of the woods, but uh, gut them and drag them out of the woods. That's too much work. And uh, what I do now, I'll show you, is uh, I just quickly cut the choice uh, pieces of meat off the hog the back strap or tenderloin and the two hams and don't have to gut the hog or do all that hard work and that's what I did last weekend with that other hog so I'll show you that here in a minute how I do that and uh, makes it a whole lot easier and because there's so many of these hogs and you shoot so many of them and I hate to waste the meat so I like to take at least the choice cut some meat off the hog well I got to go down the down the mountain here and get my uh gear and, and get after it and get to work so yeah that's only about a uh, probably about back to the tree stand there probably about uh oh 15 yards 15 yards at the most uh just a really nice uh really nice setup quite a few hogs in here so we'll get uh get after it and get this hog cleaned up and uh get out of here and head to the house well here i am with my hog uh uh, this is a hog I came out here for tonight. I first saw this hog last weekend. It was with a black hog and I had a previous video where I shot the black hog. Uh, I had my crossbow with me at that time and uh, they were both facing me and I decided the first one that turns broadside I'd shoot and it was the black one. So I really wanted the white one. So I was glad to get it today, uh, a week later. Tonight it came in and uh, the only hog that came in uh, Sighted this gun in right before I came up here to hunt and uh, dead on at 30 yards. And so I uh, usually shoot them in the neck behind the ear, that drops them. But since I was really confident about my uh, scope being sighted in, and so I went ahead and took a head shot and uh, right between the eyes, very good humane shot, which I'm pleased, and uh, dropped as you can see in the video. And uh, it's a lot of fun. These are a nuisance animal. There's a lot of them out here. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of fun shooting them and very good eating. Uh, I love this combination, this gun, the uh, AR-15, 223 caliber with the uh, ATN night vision scope, supernova infrared light. It's a fantastic quality, uh, as you can see in the video, very clear and uh, uh, just a lot of fun. The, if I'm a long ways away from the uh, truck, I'll just quarter take the hams in the back strap, which I'll show you here in a minute. And, uh, but if I'm close to the road or the truck, I'll just gut the hog and uh, load it up and skin it at home. But uh, so that way I don't have to mess with the 
the gutting it and dragging it out and all that hard work. I'll uh, just take out the choice pieces of meat. So I hope you enjoyed the uh, video of uh, the hunt as much as I did. It's a uh, tremendous amount of fun. I love this stuff and uh, it's very good eating. I've already ate, been eating on that uh, black one I got last weekend uh, a couple of times during the week and uh, very tender, very good eating. These are, hogs are really fat. They've been eating acorns for about a month and a half and they just got a, about an inch thick layer of fat on them. Very healthy, pristine shape uh, with a lot of fat on them and uh, very good eating. So we'll get after this thing, get it butchered up and get this, uh, get these hindquarters off of here and uh, take out these back straps and I'll show you how to do that. Let's get this thing butchered up. So what I'd like to do is try to get him on his, get him on his belly. Ah, I can get on hold of that back. And uh, then what I do is I cut right down the middle of the back here. And uh, Just cut right straight down through that, right along the backbone. <clears throat> and then skin it back. I was telling you about the fat. Look at the fat on them thing. That's a inch and a half. Almost two inches of fat on them. They are very uh, healthy fat hogs. And uh, then cut this, gotta cut down the, uh, cut down the side there a little bit. And then uh, skin this back along the ribs so you can get to that, uh, that uh, tenderloin. And uh, it doesn't take long to just There we go, that's far enough. And then uh, same thing on the other side here, cut it. <clears throat> cut it down the side there a little bit and I'll start peeling it back. And uh, and work left-handed if you can. Or turn around and work from the back which I guess I will and uh, we'll uh, cut this out of here and uh, skin it this way Get skin down along the rib cage there. Now we can get to that uh, tenderloin, the back strap. And uh, so we find that backbone and we cut right along the edge. Of the backbone there and the other side there Get up to that front shoulder. And then just rake that knife blade along that 
the ribs. And that pretty much <clears throat> takes care of that. That's one. We'll lay it over here on this log there and we'll get the other strap out of there start up here get behind that front shoulder It's just hard to walk away from this really high quality acorn and grass fed natural organic uh, meat, which I feel like is a lot better than what you get commercially that's commercially fed. And uh, so we'll uh, get these two tenderloins out of here. There's number two, and we'll get it over here on the log. Now then, we got the, uh, so we've taken out the two tenderloins out of the back without having to gut the hog or anything. And uh, man, look at the fat on that thing. That's a really good shape. So now we go after these hindquarters. And what I do on that, I turn him back over on his back and then just cut right in through here. Oh, my knife's getting a little bit dull on me. Cut right around there. And uh, where's my other knife at? There it is. Let's see if this other one's got an edge on it. Yeah, there we go. And just cut right around there and try to find that joint, that hip joint. There it is. Right there's where it's at. If you can find that little ball joint, then you can cut them off without having to saw through that bone and uh, take them right on off of there. J 
just like that. So there's one ham. There, we'll put it over here. Get the other one off there. To try to find that that hip joint. There it is, right there. Get that that one joint. Get all that business cut off there. Well, it doesn't take long to dull an edge on these hogs. quarter so now you got both hind quarters and the uh, both hind quarters and the uh, back straps and uh, so the choice cuts meat and uh, the rest of it's left for the coyotes. You don't have to gut the animal. You don't have to haul him out. And uh, so it makes really good short work of it. So we're done with that. And uh, that's how we do that and get, uh, get the good cuts of meat off the hog. So get our hands washed up here and uh, get this stuff all packed out of here and get back to the, uh, back to the truck. This is my setup. These are the uh, tubes. I got them on a on a chain there at the end, and uh, chain took to a, a T post that's driven in the ground. The uh, with a loop at the end to uh, that way they can't knock them around too far. So they're hooked up that way, and uh, that's what first alerted me to the hog coming in was uh, he was kicking these around, making all kinds of racket. Turned my monocular on, and uh, sure enough, uh, he was down here. So, uh, just, uh, I may do a review on these hog tubes. Drill holes in them, fill them full of corn, got a screw and cap on them. And uh, I'll buy everything at Lowe's and your local pipe supply. And put a little chain on it, and the chain goes on the loop. And then loop it over the T-post, and, uh, and they're there when you, they don't go away. And, uh... Of course, here's my uh, stand over here, about oh, about 20, about uh, 15 yards away, and uh, it's uh, up there is where I'm shooting from. It's all camoed in and covered up, and uh, excellent place. They didn't, they don't see or hear me or anything, and uh, so we're, like I said, we're only about about uh, 15 yards away over here, and uh, where our tubes are. And uh, so it's uh, that's my setup, and uh, a lot of hogs coming in. We got them on video and game camera. Got my game camera set up over here, 
and uh, turn it back on close it up and uh, see what comes in the rest of the week and then next weekend we'll come back and uh, see if we can't get another video and get another hog killed and uh, maybe a big boar or something I'm after a big boar so uh, well, we gotta now yeah, we gotta get back uh, back down to the truck and take our two hams and our uh, tenderloins and uh, back straps them down and put them on the put them in the ice chest so we're gonna pack everything up and uh, get on back out of here so and, uh, like I said leave this for the coyotes they'll clean that up and uh, I hear them yipping over there as we speak well here we are back at the uh, vehicle we uh, got our hunt all finished up we uh, got our hog butchered up got it in the ice chest and uh, we put the gun away and uh, another evening I'm tired and wore out uh, a lot of fun though is exhausting but uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, there's a lot more hogs to come we're gonna start shooting a lot more of them about producing a lot more videos so if you enjoy watching these hog hunts then please uh, subscribe and watch our channel and and uh, we'll try to uh, put more hog videos on there and uh, hope that you enjoy them <laughs>